welcome everybody to another glorious episode of the Put on Waivers podcast. I'm your host, Dwayne Douglas, podcasting off the beautiful shores of the Pacific Ocean. Beautiful day out here in Southern California. Yesterday it was raining for the first time in a long time, and then we got back to normal, back to our back to, back to our new our normal here in Southern California. So we have Jake Hatch. He's from the Locked On Cougars podcast, part of that Locked On podcast network. Probably has a bunch of built bars in that fridge. Um, we know, we know, we know how that goes as far as that goes. Um, we want to, I mean, listen, like, you know, I am, you know, there is like a West coast bias. I'm an SC fan. Um, and you know, you, you guys cover the, the BY Cougars, you know, how this goes. Like if it doesn't happen at Penn state or Michigan or Ohio state, Alabama, you know, SEC stuff, it, it's almost like it doesn't even happen. Right. So let's talk about a little bit about, um, BYU cause they're building something really strong. Um, there, I think, and, you know, they could be a team, you know, to be reckoned with in the future. Um, Sataki comes in, takes over that program. What do you think the best, um, what, give us a description of like what, what, what kind of that engulfs, like, like how, how much have they taken off since he's been there? So it, it got off to a pretty good start because Kalani Sataki's first year actually was uh, Taysom Hill's senior year, you know, Taysom now with the New Orleans Saints. And, uh, he came in and put up a nine and four record that season. I think a lot of people thought, okay, wow, we're just going to get off to a run and start here. But then the following year, they had their worst season in 40 years. They had a four and nine record that year, just a, just a kind of a, a mirror opposite image of what you had seen the year before. But since then, it's been pretty a pretty steady climb Two back to back seven and six seasons. And then of course, last year going 11 and one. So I, I think most BYU fans right now are actually feeling really good about the current trajectory of this program with Kalani Satake at the helm. You got to figure you, you, you're going to, you have Taysom Hill who we see every Sunday. Um, and then now another quarterback going into the um, NFL drafts and Zach Wilson, who we'll talk about a little bit later um, playing big programs. Um, is that something that, I know. I mean, I think I think SC went there a couple of years ago, and then and and, you, and BYU won. Um, is 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 it hard to get those home and home schedule? Like, do 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 teams of you know the SEC teams, the ACC teams, you know, Big Big Twelve, all that stuff like that? Do they want to? Do they kind of not want to go play BYU? Is it hard to get those games scheduled? Uh, it, since they went independent, it's been a decade since they went that route with their football scheduling, and they're usually doing this four and five and six years out. Uh, so this coming season, they actually have seven Power Five teams on the schedule. Okay. Uh, so they're they're finding, I think, a little easier as time goes on to ink those deals. But you're you're putting them out way in advance. Uh, for example, just earlier this week. They announced a home and home deal with Ole Miss from the SEC. Okay. It's uh, it's a game in Provo and a game in Oxford, but they will not be played until 2028 and 2029. So, they're way out in advance. I actually traveled to USC this year to finish off the regular season, according to what we're looking at in the 2021 schedule. So, they're they're slowly but surely adding more and more of these Power Five teams. And this year, seven of their 12 games currently scheduled are against Power Five programs. Yeah, is we, we know about Wilson and his, his he's definitely gonna be a top five pick. Are there more are there more guys on this roster who you would who you would say um, on draft day, maybe day one, day two, day three might be guys to look for? I think a day two guy to keep an eye on was their left tackle, Brady Christensen. Uh, he was a junior just like Wilson who decided to leave school early and enter the NFL draft. Uh, most of the buzz I'm hearing is on him being a day two. Uh, most likely kind of a round three, round four guy. So maybe the first part of day three, potentially, but he, he's got to keep an eye on uh, Zach Wilson's favorite target at wide receiver was Dax Milne this past year, had a hundred catch 1000 yard season. Uh, I've been hearing that he's probably a day three guy. Uh, I actually saw a report just earlier. I actually, I think it was yesterday, maybe that the San Francisco 49ers uh, were meeting with Milne to just do one of those virtual visits like they're doing this year with most prospects. So those two guys in particular are ones that BYU has in this current draft class. Other guys to keep an eye on that are probably the back half of the draft day three guys include their defensive tackle, Kairos Tonga, 
a uh, cornerback and Chris Wilcox. And then a guy that if had he not ruptured his Achilles in the preseason last year, probably is a guy who I think is a second or third round pick is Matt Bushman, their star tight end. But he actually got injured in training camp last year, sat out the entire season, decided, you know what, I need to go make my money now. So he entered the NFL draft. He's been working out, trying to rehab that injury. Who knows what he's going to be able to do in terms of drills and the run up to the draft here. But Mm -hmm. there is buzz that he could find himself in the tail end of the draft as well. So there are are six or seven guys that could find their names being called this year. And looking at the, looking at the past season, how was the the difficulty of dealing with COVID in this, in this whole thing? Like how was it easier being in the independent um, squad than rather than being in the conference? I think in some ways it was easier because BYU as an independent program, they, they really had to answer to themselves with regards to their ability to play. And that's not saying that they were, they were flouting rules of COVID-19 and trying to get around it, et cetera. They were very stringent about their testing protocols, making sure that they were keeping their players safe as much as possible. Uh, Funny enough, last year we we had 12 games on the schedule originally as we normally do. By the time August rolled around, there was one point where they only had two games scheduled. They, they put a 12-game schedule together on the fly, essentially, last mm-hmm. year, and were lucky to play that many games. They had a game against Army canceled due to the COVID pandemic. Uh, so they're, they weathered it, as, I think, as best you possibly could hope for. Uh, and I think it did help the fact that, yes, they were able to – say, you know what, we, we're good to go. We can play these games. They essentially they were answering to themselves. They didn't have a conference they were answering to, et cetera. But at the same time, that scheduling uh, really disrupted what had been a pretty good schedule, like on paper, with multiple Power 5 opponents on it. And they didn't play a single Power 5 team last year. And a lot of people, with regards to guys like, guys like Zach Wilson, are sitting there wondering, what about the level of competition he went against? And it's a very valid question. Yeah, yeah. Um... Looking at the NFL draft here, it could be he could, according to um, Chris Sims, he should go one over Trevor Lawrence, right? So that you know, <laughs> there's no there's, there's no clickbait there at all at all there. Um, you what do you get the, the best the best fit? Like when you look at these, like, let's just say even the Dolphins are like, hey, we're move, we're willing to move on from Tua. Like if you had a team that you could say, hey. I'm going to play Zach here. Where would you, where would you place him? So I've actually got two teams in mind and I will actually, I'll give them, I'll give you three. So of course there's the debate right now, Trevor Lawrence going to the Jacksonville Jaguars with the top overall pick. And at that point, all bets are off with, with regards to what the New York jets are doing. I pay really close attention to the San Francisco 49ers just simply due to the fact that I'm a lifelong 49ers fan. And Mike LaFleur, who is going from San Francisco with Robert Sala to the New York Jets, Mm -hmm. the offense that he's going to run, I think it would fit what Zach Wilson is trying to do very, very well. So if the Jets are not sold on Sam Darnold and they feel like, you know what, we need to start over and find our guy at quarterback, I very much could see the Jets stand and pat it to and take Zach, and I think it would be a pretty nice fit. The other two teams I'm keeping an eye on, are the Carolina Panthers. I think Joe Brady, the former LSU offensive coordinator, now there in Carolina with Matt Rule, I think he'd do some really cool things with what Zach Wilson's skill set is. They're at the eighth pick right now, if I'm not mistaken. So there may be, they may have to move up a little bit to take him, but I think it'd be a good fit for him there in, uh, there in Carolina. And then finally, the Atlanta Falcons. I know that Matt Ryan, his situation right now is unresolved with regards to his future as the quote-unquote franchise quarterback. But I think similar to what we saw with Alex Smith and Patrick Mahomes with the Kansas City Chiefs a few years back, where Mahomes came in and essentially got a redshirt year where you had Alex Smith start that entire year. Mahomes was able to sit back, really learn the offense, learn about uh, being an NFL quarterback. And you saw what happened from there. He's won a Super Bowl, played in another one. It's pretty special. I think that if the Falcons could bring Zach in, let him sit for a year, let Matt Ryan play out his deal there, and then make the transition, might be a home run fit there as well. Yeah. Um, the Jets, before sitting at two, do you have a concern about him going to that city? I feel like it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a fishbowl. I, I mean, like, BYU, I mean, when you guys play, 
it's it's a great it's a great place to watch a game. Like I mean, like I've never been there, but like I know that like when you watch it on TV, you know you see blue everywhere. It's it's, it's, it's a beautiful it's a beautiful place to watch um, a football game. Uh, do you feel like he can handle New York? Do you feel like you know I. I know that um, you know the head coach there took some took some offensive uh, coaches who are going to run the same Niner offense that you like so much. You know um, that boot, all the boot action that Kyle Shanahan likes. Um, would that be a good spot for him? I think so. I, he's a kid that he's got a pretty good head on his shoulders. I know there's been some people out there who said he's got quote unquote character concerns. I covered him all three years he was in Provo, and I never picked up on the fact that he had any what I would call character flaws about it. I do get yes. New York, they have so many newspapers, so many people there that you very much are in a fishbowl. And if you're a quarterback, one of those two franchises, whether it's the Giants or the Jets, you got a lot of attention. Yes, on so sure. I, I feel like Zach would be okay with that, but you you pay attention to what they, when you're the quarterback there, Sam Darnold has been scrutinized to no end. So there is that concern. Yeah. Um... So I didn't say this, but Ryan Rossillo said this. So I think it's one of the most, it's one of the most unique um, statements I heard about quarterbacks is when you're drafting an NFL quarterback, you don't want to draft an NFL quarterback who has a three car garage. Okay. So, so I mean, I guess you could, it, it's, you know, Josh Rosen probably had a, a three car garage, but so did Peyton Manning, right? So and, and Eli or so. So um, your thoughts about that? His, for his background, is he is he the first person and last person to leave? Is he that kind of kind of uh, work ethic kind of player? So I can tell you this much: he does come from a fairly affluent family, and I, I get that there is that concern. But I can tell you this much: Aaron Roderick, who was the passing game coordinator at BYU, recently got uh, promoted to being offensive coordinator when Jeff Grimes moved on to Baylor talked multiple times about Zach late at night. We're talking past midnight would text Aaron Roderick saying, Hey, I was watching ex NFL quarterbacks film. I was watching a play that they had. Do you think we could run something similar to this? And coach Roderick would always say, I was as stunned as anybody. I'm getting these texts from this kid as late as night as he, as it was, but it showed in his mind how dedicated Zach was to his craft. So I think this is a kid, yes, he's going to do everything within his power. He's driven, he's motivated. He wants to be a success at the NFL level. And I don't think you're going to have a concern, at least in my opinion right now, looking from the outside in, I don't think there will be a concern with regards to him working hard. Uh, as far as his comp, like who, like who, what player, I know what my comp is and people are going to probably say I'm crazy, but um, what, what do you think his comp is as far as like, who do you think he plays like or looks like when he's playing? I'm not going to lie. I see some Mahomesian qualities in him just with his ability to throw the ball from different angles. Uh, the, the BYU offense actually took a lot of different concepts from Kansas City's playbook. I know that the coaching staff went out to visit Andy Reid, who is a BYU alum. So there's, there's a relationship there. They went and visited him and they would, they would lift certain elements of that playbook and let Zach use those in BYU's offense. Uh, so I'm not saying that he's Patrick Mahomes because I'm not sure anybody's Patrick Mahomes, but I see some qualities in his game that make me think, okay, this is the type of guy who can make that uh, those plays with, yeah, you don't have a perfect platform when you're throwing the ball, you can fit it into a tight window. You can be that quote unquote Houdini who escapes pressure or escapes a problem and makes a big play. I, I see that in his game. Uh, I think I have one other couple more. Um, Let's see here. <laughs> I lost the track a little bit. Um, my oh yeah, my my comp. My comp is 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 Deshaun Watson a little bit. Like I just I just feel like I just feel like he has he just he can just move around. He can do a lot of things. He can the, the ball placement, the deep ball is which which people thought that was going to be an issue with um with Watson. And he can he can make all those throws. Like and even though the competition might not have been great. If you have this kind of space <laughs> to get a ball into, and you do it, then I mean that to me that kind of that shows that arm strength um, um, and, and the accuracy that you need to be an NFL quarterback, right? Well, so and that's the funny thing about it. Going back to the Chris Sims conversation he had on Pro Football uh, Talk, he he talked about the fact that he got covered is covered. You, you yes, got to make that throw regardless. So yes. if it's covered, covered. You you got to deal with it. I actually like the Deshaun Watson. Uh, 
the comp there a little bit because Zach is a guy that I think most people when he came out of high school especially thought he was a true dual threat quarterback and he was very quick to say no I'm a quarterback who likes to make plays from the pocket with my arm I will use, I will use my legs if I have to and he proved that yeah. he, he'd make plays from the pocket but let's say every guy downfield is covered he's got a 10 yard gain he'll go take those 10 yards and he'll cover that ground real quick but he loves making plays from the pocket and I, I do like the fact that when I was when, when I was going watching the film he knows how to slide which I yeah. think some people some quarterbacks should really know how to slide um, because the, the, those NFL linebackers and safety people are trying to take your head off um, you mentioned Niners so let's talk a couple things about the Niners real quick is Kyle under some real pressure right now or do you know do your or him and the, or him and Lynch um pretty good right now in San Francisco I think they need to figure out this quarterback situation I you they hate Jimmy G they, 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 they hate him I've got this I've, I've got that poster behind me of the catch the, the famous yeah. play history up there on my wall I can tell you this much they've got to figure out what they're doing quarterback wise I actually and just as me being selfish I would love to see zach wilson playing for the san francisco 49ers uh, i think exactly. kyle shanahan could do some special things i'm just not sure they're gonna be able to move up high enough to get him in, in, in my heart of hearts i just don't think that they have the draft capital to do that so i think that they need to figure out their quarterback situation if i'm the 49ers i'd go all in on getting deshaun watson if you can get him get him to san francisco let kyle shanahan work with him and i really think that if the 49ers have a a good run of health next year they could very much be right back into the playoff mix because they got absolutely decimated this past year injury wise yeah um any any thoughts about jj watt going to the going to the cardinals i mean that division just gets i i, I guess the seahawks are making are talking to some teams i think i think unfortunately i think i think my team is probably the only team that really could give them back a lot of what they need because if the raiders did if the Raiders, who I'm, a, I'm a car guy, but sure. but if Wilson and Watson are better, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna have that. That's a silly argument for me to say car is better than those guys. But if they if they're really serious about trading Wilson, car to Seattle would be better than what my um you know what you know, any of these other teams could give. Absolutely, I see. And if you, Raiders, I would be all in on trying to get a guy like Russell Wilson. If they're gonna answer your phone calls see what it would take to get a guy like that. He's a proven commodity. It sounds like he's not very happy there with the Seattle Seahawks, especially with them alleged, well, apparently not letting him have more input on the franchise and what they're doing there. I really like JJ Watt going to the Arizona Cardinals. It terrifies me as a 49ers fan because yeah. thinking of Chandler Jones and JJ Watt uh, rushing the passer from opposite sides when it comes to those NFC West matchups, but the division it gets better and better each year. Stafford's I, here now. Stafford's yeah, there now. Stafford, yeah. So it, I'll tell you this much: the NFC West it already was tough enough to compete in that division. It's only getting tougher, and that's why I am of the opinion the Niners really need to figure out their quarterback situation. And it's, it's my opinion they need to find a better quarterback or a better option than Jimmy G. Last one: Justin Fields. Do you like him at all? I do the like Niners. Him. I do like Justin Fields a lot. I think he throws an incredible deep ball. I, you can see that on the film from Ohio State. I know that uh, Kyle Shanahan, he's got the whole moniker of running the West Coast offense where it's side to side, but he has proven he's, he's a guy who's willing to take shots down the field. You need an accurate deep ball thrower, and I think that's what Justin Fields offers to you. I'm not necessarily convinced that Fields is the most accurate in the short to intermediate passing game, mm -hmm. but – I feel like that can be coached into him by a guy like Kyle Shanahan, but I really do like Fields' game. No question about it. And listen, accuracy can be improved. Josh Allen did it with the Bills. He, he jumped. He made a huge jump last year. Hey. Listen, Jake, it was fun. Uh, yeah. It was fun talking to you about um, the Cougars and Little Niners as well, too. So take care. Um, you know, have, have a couple of Bilt Bars on me, and we'll talk, we'll talk next time. We will do it. Thanks again for having me. All right, bro.